The boy took out his invention and showed it to his father. He took out the battery and the radio, but he could still hear the sound. Father was surprised. The boy explained that it was wind power. Electricity is generated by turning the blades. If using a larger paddle, he can create more electricity to drive the pump to pump out water from the ground, so that they can overcome the drought. Father was feeling happy. But then the boy told him this required dismantling his bike for part of the generator. Hearing this, father was instantly upset. Why do you just rely on this broken windmill? This angered the father who hadn't eaten for a few days. He slapped his son's hard work. But you never imagined that the broken toy saved the lives of the whole village, and even ended the entire country's history relying on the weather. What's even more outrageous is that this is a true story. Please be patient and watch this story if you haven't had a good time. It may affect your whole life. The boy's name was William. He was born in a small African country called Malawi. This is one of the 10 poorest countries in the world, with an electricity penetration rate of less than 1%. The unique tropical inland location determines the extreme weather here. There were five consecutive months of heavy rain, followed by scorching sun for more than half a year. Poverty and hunger are the haunting shadows of this land forever. William lives here. At 13, he likes to tinker with small electrical appliances, and he also repairs radios for villagers to earn some pocket money. His father has no education, and the unpredictable weather is the most worrying thing every day because it is related to whether his family will be hungry. But even so poor, the father still insisted on paying the first tuition fee for his son to go to middle school. Wearing a beautiful school uniform, William hugged his father excitedly. At the opening ceremony, the principal gave a passionate lecture. Although the conditions of the school are not good, but each of you has the responsibility to decide how much effort you put in. While speaking, a sudden burst of thunder in the sky. Soon it began to rain cats and dogs. Looks like this year will bode well. After school, the physics teacher reminded William to pay the remaining tuition fees before next week. Otherwise, he would not be able to study again. William felt very uncomfortable after hearing this, and his physics test scores were unsatisfactory. He wanted to study at night, but there was no kerosene lamp at home. So he and his friend went to the dump to hunt for treasures that a nearby tobacco factory discarded. After searching, William found a water pump. Then they dug up a discarded lead acid battery, but it was useless. William, who returned home, saw the chief in a meeting. To save costs and make more profits, the tobacco company purchased the last forest trees at 2,000 kwachas per ton and used them as fuel for drying tobacco. You should know 2,000 kwachas is less than 2 US dollars. But this year's harvest was meager. Villagers were afraid of starvation, so they signed the agreement no matter how the chief and William's father exhorted. Ultimately, they could only watch the trees that resisted the flood fall, which also doomed the villagers to the coming tragic fate. The long rainy season began not long after, to moisten the corn seeds sown not long ago. The gangsters in the village have nothing to do all day long, so they set up a radio club. Listening soccer games on the radio is their greatest pleasure. During this period, William learned to use corn as a trap, and the sparrows he caught were the tickets to enter the club. On this day, they were listening to the World Cup with great interest, but the radio ran out of power at a critical moment. Everyone was very disappointed and ready to go home. But William picked up a bunch of dead batteries. Radios use a lot of power. So when the batteries die, there's usually a bit of juice at the end. In this way, he became the idol of gangsters. On the way back, William saw the physics teacher was dating his sister. This behavior is shameless in that backward place. William decided to do something to the teacher. The next day, William planned to puncture the teacher's bike tire. But being kind by nature, he couldn't do anything. His friend said, to remove the headlight, which can be used when you read at night. William thought it was a good idea. Just then, he discovered an interesting thing. If you turn the pedal quickly, the headlights will light up. And this light illuminated William's life like the sun. The next day, students who didn't pay their tuition fees were named and suspended by the principal. William was among them. He knew there was no extra money at home. The rain was still falling and the trees also fell in the distance, as if indicating disaster was coming. After days of rain, the trail's accumulated water slowly gathered into a river. Without the shelter of trees, the flood poured into the farmland ferociously. His father searched desperately in the mud-filled land, as if he wanted to find the washed-away seeds and the hope of the whole family. But how can a mortal fight against the weather? After surviving the continuous rain, they started the days of desperate exposure to the sun. 
The corn seedlings were all listlessly drooping on the ground. The consequences would be unimaginable if this continued. His father had no choice but to seek help from a friend who worked in the government. Unexpectedly, his friend told him that the whole country was about to famine. You have to survive by yourself. Then his father found the chief again, hoping he would say to the situation when the president came here to solicit votes. The government should not let them starve. William found another lead acid battery at the dump that day, he excitedly told his friend. If you take out the bad cells and connect the positive and negative with this one, we can make a good battery, but it needs to charge. It needs electricity. With electricity, we can fix the pump. We never know what's happening with the rain. To find out how to generate electricity, William put on his school uniform and sneaked into the school. After school, he went to the teacher and asked how the bicycle generates electricity. The teacher told him it was a DC generator, but the teacher didn't know the specific principle. He suggested William go to the library to look for it. However, expelled students are not eligible to enter the library. So he threatened the teacher with his sister's dating. Then he successfully entered the library. He soon found a book called Using Energy. Looking at this book, his eyes sparkled as if he had broken into an unknown world. From then on, he always stared in a daze at the tornado. Then wander around in the dump to find things he can use. The president who came to solicit votes came. In a peaceful atmosphere, the chief was invited to speak on stage. He first complimented the president's brilliant achievements, and then said many places this year had no harvest due to dryness. What is this man? We need an assurance of emergency break. We need a government prepared to support its people. I want to vote for this government. I cannot vote for any man who will turn two blind eyes to a catastrophe. But before he finished speaking, he was pulled away by a bodyguard. Then they punched and kicked the old chief. When William and his friends saw it, they rushed to rescue the chief. The bodyguard fired a warning shot. The scene suddenly became a mess. Blood covered the chief's face, but the president drove away in a luxury car. The way of relying on the government to rescue them is not feasible. Now they can only harvest corn as soon as possible, but the current corn is far from enough to support the family until next year. His father had no choice but to remove the iron sheet from the roof and sell it in the town. He wanted to do everything possible to tide over the difficulties. But there was a piece of news on the radio that made him angry. The government denied that there was a food crisis. Ironically, the food price has increased five times in the town. To put pressure on the government, his father disregarded his wife's opposition and resolutely boarded a truck supporting the protest. As the Great Famine intensified across the country, William accelerated his research. He explained to the teacher in charge of the library that I wanted to use the windmill to charge the battery to drive the electric pump to draw water, so that a complete irrigation system could be built. If corn could be grown now, there would be no food shortage. As long as I have the DC generator on the physics teacher's bicycle, I can do it. At this time, the physics teacher had resigned, and he was concentrating on how to elope with William's sister. However, he was rejected by her. The principal taught the following physics class. He was angry after he found William studying in the corner. He denounced William's behavior as stealing, and drove him out despite William's begging. But the library teacher pleaded with the principal. He was not sneaking into the school. Don't you see, Mr. Ofesi? Can you not see that he's been sneaking out of the fields? But that doesn't impress the principal. William looked at the dry land in front of him. He believed that he only lacked one most important thing to save this place. After all, in this ignorant village, he has the most precious knowledge. At this moment, the government brought in two truckloads of low-priced relief food, and everyone rushed to buy food with bags. William even got on his father's bike. The first truck was quickly emptied of food. The villagers who saw the situation were in a mess in an instant. Fortunately, William squeezed into the crowd with his thin body and bought a bag of corn at the last moment. At the same time, those who failed to buy food began to loot. A hungry refugee broke into William's home, and the sister could only watch helplessly as the food was taken away. The corn harvested not long ago was also looted by the hungry people. His mother sat helplessly on the ground and cried bitterly. In the evening, the family sat around and worried about the only food left. William's father said, we can only eat one meal a day in the future, but which meal should we eat? William's mother suggested eating dinner. She doesn't like going to bed hungry, but William felt they should have breakfast. Otherwise, he would have no energy for the day. His sister couldn't stand this topic any longer, and rushed out the door in despair. She complained his father shouldn't leave them to go to protest, and we were likely to be killed. Her mother slapped her angrily. <laughs> Kugani zandinga kusie ufedinjara, hichite kudula, 
mkono kuti udi kuti udziwe ndiwe mwana wanga Soon the real famine came even hungry William's father insisted on picking water to irrigate the land but this little water is like a drop in the bucket under the scorching sun on the other side William couldn't even see a sparrow when he hunted birds during the meal he secretly hid a ball of rice behind but was discovered by his father Kamu pats ngalo ameni ocha kudie dikutio la kos In the middle of the night William had no choice but to find his sister hoping she could talk to the teacher since he had learned how to drive the water pump He could bring enough water to the fields in no time, except for the dynamo on the bicycle. Looking at sincere eyes of William, his sister fell into a long struggle. The following day, William's sister disappeared. The mother cried out in anxiety, and the father also shed tears for the first time. She left a letter saying, "I'm leaving so that the family can have one less mouth to eat." William walked back to the room in a daze and saw a small DC generator on the table. He realized his sister had gone away for him with his teacher. Then they went to the principal to ask for an explanation. Since the teacher in his school made the mistake, the principal lost his former strength this time. He promised to allow William to use the library freely before the school closed. The library teacher had helped him repair the battery. After getting the relevant principal book, William told his friends about his windmill plan. Although some people think it is absurd, but most of his friends believe and support him. Under William's patient guidance, they softened the water pipes to make fan blades. If there were not enough parts, they went to the dump to find them. According to the knowledge in the books, They pieced together a small windmill. After opening the door, the raging wind poured into the house, and it was the moment to witness the miracle. Yeah! William knew he would be successful, but to pump water, he had to make a bigger windmill. He needed bigger gear. Dad's bike is the best part. So William showed his father his windmill, and the scene at the beginning appeared. Seeing that the drought was worsening, the friends began packing their things and preparing to flee to the south. But who can be sure there is enough food in the south? Under William's persuasion, they decided to give it a go. Since it doesn't make sense, they can only force it. So a group of people aggressively asked William's father for the bicycle. Unexpectedly, his father picked up the hoe in his hand. The teenagers were frightened and fled in all directions, leaving only William in despair in the dusty. Gradually, new graves were raised in the village. Even his dog starved to death under the tree. William was sad and helpless. Hunger is slowly taking away everything he holds dear. After his mother discovered what had happened, she talked to her husband and told him what they had lost over the years. Uli consent in apita ndino. Maluzi basi. Makolo wanga. Amene ndina bora kuna. Kena kaminda. Kena ka ane. Tufuko chaina. Ai. Sindino. Nikukufa msani. Maluzi wa. Adzali kaliti. These words seemed to wake up the stubborn father, who then rode to find his son. The father and son talked openly for the first time. His father said sadly, "My father was right in not leaving the land to me because he had already known that I would not be flexible and look forward." But William shook his head. "It was you who taught me never to give up, and you also taught me to study, so I know how to use the wind to bring water to the fields." Looking at his son's determined eyes, he finally let go of the paranoia. Anyway, they have nothing to lose. However, his father still secretly felt distressed seeing his old buddy, who had been with him for many years, being dismantled. Afterward, the villagers who learned of the situation also rushed to help. They set up tall shelves, and William dropped the water pipe into the well tens of meters deep. With the concerted efforts of everyone, a tall windmill was erected. William connected each wire, then turned the windmill to the direction of the wind, and finally untied the fan blades. The big windmill started to dance in the wind, and it also blew William's clothes. The tires rubbed the small generator, and a steady stream of current was passed down from the fan. The villagers were all digging and getting ready until a hopeful sound interrupted them. The father embraced his son in ecstasy, and the water, symbolizing life, flowed continuously to the fields and also into people's long dried hearts. From this day on, Farmers in Malawi no longer rely on rain for farming. God touches everything like the wind, and the green shoots burst out like new hope. This is a true story that happened in Africa. Because of this windmill, William received a government scholarship to complete his studies, walked out of the mountains, and even got a degree from Dartmouth College in the United States. He used his personal experience to prove that knowledge can change destiny. The most terrible thing in life is never poverty, nor failure, but poverty without knowing it and never persevering. We cannot choose our birth. but we can decide to change our future even if you are born with despair you can live with hope